NCAA 2K20 on GA Sports is brought to you by Derek's NCAA 2020-2021 rosters. These are the most authentic college basketball rosters ever produced, featuring true-to-life player faces, ratings, and tendencies, as well as fully customized teams, coaches, and lineups. Check out the Patreon featured in the description so you can get the roster when it drops, plus monthly updates. Come be a part of the most ambitious project in sports gaming by clicking the link in the description. Welcome to the first ever NCAA 2K20 rankings. The non-conference tournament season is done. There are just three games left for each team before conference play begins. So now is the time to reveal our first rankings. Remember, at the end of the season, there will be a 16-team tournament to decide the national champion, featuring just four at-large bids, so teams' rankings will be crucial in deciding who goes dancing. We'll be ranking the top 15 teams so far, and we begin with the only team with a losing record to crack this exclusive group, the Minnesota Gophers. Absolutely, and as Griffin said, they are the only team with a losing record. Uh, they come in at 2-3, and three. they play in the Big Ten Conference, and you know, um, they were the best 2-3 and three team, in our opinion, uh, based on strength of schedule there. Well, let's move quickly on then to number 14. It is the UCLA Bruins, the winners of the Wooden Legacy, and we put UCLA here uh, mostly because of who they've played, and you look at you look at you know a loss against KU, a, a, a close loss against the Jayhawks, and then a double OT win over Michigan State. Two tremendous games against Purdue and Arizona, and then you have a loss against North Carolina, who is going to finish fairly high in these rankings. So, for me and for us, UCLA being here, that is. That is a, a testament to how good they were in their three wins against Michigan State, Purdue, and Arizona. Yeah, absolutely. And then coming in at number 13, we have those Arizona State Wildcats. Also in the Pac-12 Conference, also coming in at 3-2. and two. Um, We put them where they were because, you know, uh, UCLA, while they did win the Wooden Legacy Classic, they... Um, we did want Arizona State to go just about ahead of them because Arizona State's only two losses are to the CSU Rams, who, as you all know, are still undefeated at this point and somewhere in this top 15 standing. So um, we thought that the, those losses there kind of outweighed UCLA, and that's where we ended up with Arizona State there. Yeah, absolutely. And Arizona State, of course, kept it really close against CSU, losing by just one point in their mm -hmm. first game of the season, 54-53. At number 12, just edging out the Wildcats, is the Tigers from LSU, our first SEC team on the board here. It's a fairly small sample size from the Tigers at just 2-1, and one, and their wins over Ohio State and Virginia are not very impressive when you look at the records of those two teams. But a loss against Memphis, I mean, what are you going to do? It's, it's Memphis. Of course, they're going to end up pretty high in these rankings. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Definitely, just it, it's it's always hard to say a two and one team is a little bit better than a three and two team based on you know as Griffin said sample size here. Yep, number eleven, just missing out on the top ten is the Auburn Tigers, and we have them edging out uh, LSU for one reason, and it's because Auburn's signature win, an 85-77 victory over the Washington Huskies. Uh, LSU does not have a win against a team that good. Washington is 4-1 and one right now. So Auburn just edges out their fellow Tigers and their SEC rivals. Absolutely. And they are Legends Classic winners um, from earlier in the season. And then coming in at number 10, you know, just edging ahead of them, another 2-1 team, a Big 12 team actually, and the Maui Jim Maui champions, we have the Kansas Jayhawks here. Yeah, and the thing about Kansas, again, it's a fairly small sample size at 2-1. and one. Your one loss is against Duke. You have to at least make the top 10. Convincing wins over UCLA and Florida. So how else do you put Kansas any lower than number 10? At number 9, it's our first of what will become, spoiler alert, several non-Power 5 conference teams that end up in these rankings. The Villanova Wildcats. And Villanova, they... they kind of stumbled towards the end against Memphis, but I mean, how do you call that a stumble when you look at how good Memphis is? You have wins over Louisville, uh, West Virginia, and Arizona. They were convincing in each of those. 
Villanova is a really, really good team. This is not an indicator of where they might finish. This is an indicator of where they are now, and teams really should be scared. Villanova has a lot to offer. Absolutely. And then coming in at number eight, we have those Washington Huskies from the Pac-12, another Pac-12 team here. And then as Griffin mentioned earlier, they are four and one. Um, tell us a little bit about Washington here, Griffin. Yeah, so Washington, what's interesting about them, again, several signature wins here, both of them against Minnesota, uh, who we've already mentioned coming in at number 15. So you're talking about two wins against the top 15 team. They stumbled once against Auburn in a close game, 85-77, but they've been commanding, especially in wins over Baylor and TCU. Those are two teams that finished fairly low. Uh, it certainly did not make the top 15. That's what you'd expect from a team like Washington. You have to reward a team that is 4-1. We haven't seen a ton of them, but I think that's going to change. A game against Gonzaga is in their future uh, before we start the conference season. Moving on to number seven, it's a team that I think will divide opinions here, the <laughs> Kentucky Wildcats. Now here's the thing about Kentucky, right? They're three and two. So obviously they're two losses. You know, you look at you look at teams that have finished now behind them, teams like Villanova, Kansas, and Washington, and all have one loss. But the thing about Kentucky, a lot of it is the eye test. They have the nation's top scorer in EJ Montgomery. And they've looked good in all of their games. Their only two losses come against the same team, close games against Texas Tech. That's just going to be their bugaboo. That's just going to be the team that Kentucky can't handle. But wins over Maryland, USC, Michigan State, and Ohio State, this Kentucky team can go anywhere, beat anybody, and they boast, again, the nation's top scorer in EJ Montgomery. How can you put them any lower? Absolutely, you you can't really put them any lower. Now, slight correction there, they're at four and two, not three and two. Um, yep, but yep, still, right. still four very you know, very good wins over teams that you know we would expect Kentucky, a typical Kentucky team, to beat. Um, Texas Tech, yeah, coming out of nowhere with those two those two losses there, especially one in a championship game. I'm sure, uh, you know, if you're a Kentucky fan, you have nothing to worry about moving forward. Um, coming in yep. here, number six, another non-Power 5 conference school. We have Seton Hall coming in at 4-1, and one, and they're the Emerald Coast Classic champions. Seton Hall here is, they're just one of those teams that I, I personally enjoyed watching. Um, I don't know about you, but they, they are fantastic. They did have a big loss to UNC, um, but, you know, they did, they did pretty much clean the floor against every other team they played in terms of Michigan, Florida State, and TCU, and then had that overtime thriller against Purdue um, to win to win that Emerald Coast Classic there. And speaking of the Tar Heels, they are our number five team, and they edge out Seton Hall again with a smaller sample size, North Carolina coming in at 3-0. They edge out Seton Hall because, well, they destroyed the Pirates when they played in the first game of the season in the battle for Atlantis kickoff. North Carolina ends up winning that tournament, beating uh, Seton Hall 88-66. to They pick up wins over Gonzaga and UCLA. So you're looking at a North Carolina team that has three wins over top 20 teams right now. We didn't talk about Gonzaga, but they are in the top 20. So... For North Carolina, they finish ahead of Seton Hall for that reason, but they're going to finish behind our number four team, being the Texas Tech Red Raiders, for one reason and one reason only. Texas Tech has had the toughest schedule of any team in the country, and they've come out 5-1. and one. Yep, absolutely. They come out also uh, ESPN Orlando Invitational winners as well. But with one really lopsided loss to USC there, a bit, they're kind of only major blimp um, on the schedule. I mean, they beat Kentucky twice, which is very good. They beat a 3-4 and four Maryland team as well. Um, and also beating Minnesota, who comes in at 15, and then Louisville, who is just outside of these rankings here as well. Um, Texas Tech, as Griffin said, very tough strength of schedule, comes in here at number four. Number three, one that I am pleasantly surprised about personally, um, we have those CSU Rams here, another non-Power 5 team, coming in at 7-0 and and the MGM Resort Classic um, champions. I mean, what can't you say about this team? So far, they've won, and they've won, you know, pretty comfortably, to say the, to say at least for the most part, other than a, a one-point win against Arizona State. Um, but other than that, they've kind of, they've dispatched, they've dispatched teams pretty well. Uh, doesn't matter their record. I mean, their best win is twice against Arizona State, who falls in their, falls in their rankings here. But 
Other than that, CSU 7-0, they've shown they can do it in a large sample size, and you know we'll see if that can continue. Yeah, and CSU coming in at number three is really just because when you compare them to uh, numbers one and two, they don't quite stack up because, of course, four of those wins are against just two teams. They beat Arizona State twice, they beat Syracuse twice. What you get with CSU is a massive sample size, the most of any team in the country right now after having played seven games. But going head-to-head, -head, as they will do against the number two team in the country, we're really going to get a look at where CSU uh, might end up. And like I said, that number two team is the Duke Blue Devils. And Duke comes in at number two after having very impressive wins over teams like University of Kansas and Maryland. Uh, Duke, of course, won their game at the State Farm Champions Classic. Then they become Island of the Bahamas champions. With Duke on the schedule, I mean, wins against Baylor and Florida. You'd, you'd expect that from a team of Duke's caliber and Maryland as well. But, my God, you look at the eye test. This team is as good as any team in the country right now, whether it's Trey Jones, whether it's Vernon Carey, whether it's Jevin Delorier who can come off the bench. This team is powerful at every position. They dominate at every position. And they miss out on the number one spot just because of what our number one team brings to the table. Yeah, and that number one team is the Memphis Tigers. Again, another non-Power 5 conference team. Coming in at 6-0, the Jimmy Fee Classic champions. But Memphis, man, let me tell you, they have two more wins than um, Duke, but they have two more, I don't know what, how they put it, better wins than Duke, I would say. They beat LSU. They beat Villanova. Um, they, again, Louisville just barely falling outside outside the top 15 here. I mean, they have a few more impressive wins than Duke and two more wins than Duke, in my opinion. That That's what puts them at number one for myself here. Yep, well, I don't disagree, but if you guys do out there, please let us know what are your rankings at right now. I mean, there's so much more basketball to be played. And like I mentioned, each team gets three tune-up games before conference play begins, so we will have three episodes that bring you the best out of each of those games. We have some incredible matchups, some dream matchups that you wouldn't see anywhere else. Let me just give you an example. Number two and number three clash as Duke plays Colorado State. That is in our first uh, episode. And then in our final episode before conference play, Gonzaga takes on Washington for state bragging rights. That's just a taste of what you can get in those uh, non-conference tune-up game episodes. Again, we're going to have three of them, and then conference play begins in full. So if you have anything that you want to add to our rankings, you think we're wrong, let us know in the comments. We really appreciate it. To get that non-conference and all of our NCAA 2K20 series, plus everything else we do at GA Sports, you know what to do. Subscribe. We appreciate you.